welcome to my gluttony. We're back with the pantry power up, finally. <laughs> I'm Becca. And I'm Gretchen. And we are making chimichurri sauce. So this great, apparently very adaptable sauce has its roots in Argentina and Uruguay. <laughs> and when you check the internet, there are a lot of different variations of it. So it's kind of up to you which which style you like. We we settled on a recipe simply because somebody reviewing it said it was the closest that she had found that matched the sauce as she remembers from her childhood in Uruguay. So we figured that was a good one to go with. Um, exactly. So that recipe comes from Lelita.com and that's just traditional chimichurri sauce. I think we'd probably say this is a world level one dish. There is a lot of chopping and some of the recipes we came across do say that you can use a food processor, but we did not. We hand chopped everything at Gretchen's encouragement. And I think that was obviously the best choice though, because the texture and consistency that it came out to was awesome. And I think you can kind of, like you had said and reaffirmed that can only really be achieved by hand chopping, unfortunately. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Food processors just they 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 abuse the product a little too much, you know. They they whip it together. Uh, yeah, so the food processor is going to whip additional air into it. It can emulsify your sauce. It'll be closer to a paste, whereas this one should be more of a liquid. So you definitely don't want to use the food processor, unfortunately. Because yes, I also thought, okay, maybe we'll just throw it all in there, and whip it up there. <laughs> that was not allowed. Not so much. But like Gretchen said, it's such a versatile recipe or it's such a versatile sauce and base that you can really play around with it. For example, I don't really like parsley. So I split the amount of parsley with with cilantro and you can just really make it yours. It's such a fun thing to play around with. Yeah. I mean, so like the night we made it, I put it on a steak. And we had found that some of the uh, articles online, at least I found, I don't know if Becca actually found this as well. They talked about, actually, I know Becca did not find this to be the case. (laughs) But they said not to use it as a marinade. What they, I guess, traditionally, it's used more like a, almost like a barbecue sauce, where you're brushing it onto the meat as you're cooking it. So it's kind of being layered on for additional flavor. Right. But I used it as a marinade and I split it and I used half of it as a marinade with salmon. And then I saved the other half to top and I made salmon tacos and I kind of tried to make them like not necessarily grilled, but I did a really high heat and just cooked them as, you know, kind of quickly as possible on both sides and tried to simulate as much as I could a grill on my like, you know, nonstick pan. Yeah. (laughs) It was delicious though. It was so good. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, I I just brushed mine on as it was cooking and that turned out really nice. I did actually put it on the grill for once. I lit the grill and grilled something. What? Shocking. (laughs) But yeah, so there there are a lot of ways to adapt this to your plate taste. Yeah, we both used a combination of parsley and cilantro. So that was a, a, we felt a really good combo. It's very refreshing. So if you don't like parsley or cilantro, you're kind of SOL on this sauce. I don't think this is the sauce for you. Right. But, because if you did just basil, you're talking about a pesto almost yeah. instead of a chimichurri. So it gets a little blurry, but um, uh, yeah, if you like either of those, this is a good bet for you. <laughs> I mean, if you like your herbaceous sauces, this is a good one. But then the next night, we actually served it on chicken. Nice. And I think I've used it like two or three more times since then even. Mm. Well, so good. Exactly. So, so, I mean, it's fresh. It's within 48 hours because you're going to start to see the leaves start to oxidize at that point. Doesn't mean the sauce is bad. Just means it doesn't look as nice. So it'll start to get a bit brown. Sure. Like guacamole. <laughs> yeah. Exactly like that. Yeah. This sauce is super good for you though. It's packed with a ton of nutrients and vitamins. And we talk through a lot of those things. We both use olive oil. So we talk about a lot of the good fats that you get from that. 
but this happens more towards the end of the episode where we really get into some of the individual components and just how just packed with good things this sauce is for you. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a better sauce for you out there. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've come across. Yeah. <laughs> and I do bring up a couple, uh, two different videos that I watched. Although I do remember I actually mentioned that there was a video for this recipe that's that right. I used, although I don't think I watched it all the way through. That was when I started talking about how she'd done her, how she right. did her salad. Well, one, I think you said she used a lot more oregano than the recipe called for. And then once we got to the scallion green onion part and breaking it off, you were like, I'm out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not necessary. Yeah. (laughs) I'm donezo with this. (laughs) But so you talked about that video and then you talk about two other ones. Right. Toto Sobre El Asado, which is a documentary about the Argentinian barbecue, basically, and a video where Kenji Lopez Alt is at Google doing eggs and eggs Benedict, like making a holiday sauce. He was doing like a cooking demo. It was very, very nice. I liked it. Yeah, we'll share, we'll share both of those on the website so you all can enjoy them too. Mm-hmm. Gretchen also was talking about how she makes French fries that night later for her chimichurri sauce. And so we'll post that recipe too, because she also sent it to me. And I'm really excited because Gretchen got me a mandolin for Christmas. And so I'm excited to use it. I'm still anxious about it, but I'm excited. And this will be a good reason. This is a good reminder now that we're Mm -hmm. talking about this, that I need to do it. (laughs) And I sent you the gloves already. So you're exactly, I'm I'm all set. Yeah. I just, I have to summon the courage (laughs) and the sobriety. (laughs) (laughs) you're waiting until you're sober when are you ever gonna want french fries uh, fair okay gloves as long as i'm wearing the gloves yeah gloves. <laughs> the gloves will save you <laughs> i touched the mandolin the other day and cut myself i was like why am i like i was just putting it away oh god see terrifying ah! So be sure to check out our website where we're sharing the recipe we used and all of the other ones we referenced, which there were quite a few of. We'll also link to the videos we talked about. And then make sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can find us at just high gluttony for all of those. And we hope you enjoy making this what should be a staple of every kitchen. And I am finally now ready to accept it back into my home. The backstory there is that, so Gretchen and I met working at a winery and restaurant, and this particular restaurant used chimichurri sauce a lot and smoked their their meat a lot. All the time. So we both had to take a hiatus. I'm not saying it's directly responsible for me being a vegetarian now, but I'm also not saying that it didn't play a role. Not (laughs) saying. Mostly because I could just never... I never got the smell of the smoke out of my hair. Anyway, that's not what we're here, we're here to talk we're about. Hired. We both had nope. to take a hiatus from chimichurri for that reason, but we're back. We're embracing it. We're excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> and now for chimichurri sauce, fly gluttony style. Enjoy. <laughs> Yay. Well, hopefully I have enough oregano in here. So did you get all your herbs from the farmer's market? I got my cilantro and parsley from the farmer's market mm-hmm. and my, my scallions. But then I have some oregano growing in my yard. I've been kind of trying to thin it down. Okay. <laughs> and kind of like my mint, I might have thinned it down a little too much. <laughs> got it. I was able to find probably just enough, but no more. I also need to rehydrate my... I'm going to use a chili that I had in my cupboard. I have a couple of substitutions because I couldn't find fresh oregano and I couldn't find a red chili pepper for some reason. So I got jalapeno. And then when I couldn't find the oregano, Gretchen suggested fresh thyme to me instead. Yes. Perfect. Perfectly acceptable. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a jalapeno that just dried out on my counter at some point. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's a pretty good guess. Okay, got it. I was just like, oh, do I don't have a chili here? All right, well, I got some dried ones around here somewhere. But I 
did not intentionally dry by any <laughs> means. One of the things we'll probably talk about, but that we've learned is that you can make a lot of substitutions with chimichurri. Oh my gosh, there were, we found what, five different recipes. They were sort of similar in some regards, but then entirely different in others. <laughs> yeah. So I think it just sort of depends on what you like, I guess. The, the recipe that we're using, we selected mostly because somebody had commented on it that it was the most like a sauce that she had used, she had had when she was young in Uruguay. So we, we went for that one because it seemed like, okay, if somebody's saying it's just like they had in one of the countries where chimichurri is common, then that seems like a good idea. <laughs> right. Is this, this isn't the woman whose grandfather was from Uruguay? No. Uh, okay. It was her father. <laughs> We'll, we'll, put all, we'll put all the recipes we found. <laughs> yeah. We'll link to them all so that you can kind of get an idea of how, how maddening it might be to try and figure out what an authentic chimichurri is. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I know at least one of the recipes said never, ever use white vinegar. And the one that was from the No Reservations website with Anthony Bourdain said white vinegar. So we were... <laughs> Very confused after that. <laughs> and then you could swap the oils. I think in Argentina, they use a lot of, what was it, sunflower oil? Right. So olive oil is what the recipe we're using today calls for. But should we read the ingredients? Maybe. I don't know. That <laughs> might, might be a good idea. We could do that. We're off to a Here. good start. We're off to a great start. Oh, I'm not even well, that high because we have to do so much cutting. I mean, I'm, I am a little, but. Oh, I was like, well, I'm going to get a little high because. Yeah, I'm ready. I definitely am. The, the smoke bothers my dad. Crank up my <laughs> fan here. Hang on, I got to go turn on the other fan too. And my mom and I were sitting in the living room enjoying ourselves. And I was watching like how thick the smoke was and it was drifting over to the fireplace and then drifting up the wall and I could watch it go. And I was like, oh, we maybe can't keep complaining about like not being able to smoke because look how smoky it gets in here. So you're like, like, it does actually get kind of smoky. In here. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what are you smoking? White fire. What? Where'd that this come from? My friend. She nice. gave some to me. To make into butter and Ooh, I cook a little bit naturally. Nice. I like it a lot. So, but yeah, if I, if I smoke as long as I have the oven, the stove fan going, because that's that it's so strong, it'll suck the smoke right into it. Well, that's perfect. So that helps. I'm just peeling garlic. I need to do that too. Okay. I thought you were great. <laughs> Let's stop for now. Probably don't need to be any more high than that while I'm shopping. But here are your ingredients. Starting out with a half a cup of finely chopped parsley. This is, she says this is about a half a bunch that'll chop down to that. If you're doing a fine chop, remember you're going to lose a lot of volume. So it may look like a lot, but you'll end up with just, not, just probably enough. Two tablespoons of fresh oregano, finely chopped. We're being very lazy and we're going to chop all that together <laughs> <laughs> along with any other herb. And we do, we, we do have to note that Becca is not the biggest fan of parsley. So she's doing half parsley, half cilantro. And I'm mm -hmm. going to do a little more parsley and some cilantro, but I have lots of extra cilantro in case I decide I need more cilantro. <laughs> Four cloves of garlic crushed. Uh, she says one small chili pepper. I've got my mystery pepper going and Becca's <laughs> got whatever her, her jalapeno, jalapeno. <laughs> it just says a red Fresno or red Korean. So it doesn't even have to be a spicy chili pepper. It can just be like a, a little bit more of a regular pepper pepper. If you're, if you're sensitive to spice, it does say adjust more or less uh, based on your heat uh, preference and heat tolerance. So you can use one pepper, you can use two peppers, you can use half a pepper, you can use no pepper, you could use dried pepper, you can use, although it does say more often than not, they do like to use a fresh pepper for the thing for the texture. So oh, that makes sense. Two, oh, this is two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I got out 
a lot more than that. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> just decide to dump my stuff together because I, all the other recipes we looked at use so much more red wine vinegar. Yeah. Like at least half a cup, I think, or fourth, maybe. I think it was between a half a cup. No, that was the oil. I think it might've been a quarter of a cup for the red wine. Vinegar. A quarter. Yeah. But either way, definitely this was the smallest amount of red wine vinegar that we'd come across. Oh, maybe because this has lemon juice. Well, it has lemon juice. So it does get closer to a quarter of a cup because I believe if I'm remembering correctly, four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup, mm -hmm. but I'd have to double check that. Wait, I have the internet. <laughs> yep. That's right. Four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup. Okay. So I am remembering nice. that correctly. Hey. Yay. Half a cup of oil. Can't believe I didn't read this recipe. Although I shouldn't be shocked because isn't that sort of my thing is not reading the recipe. <laughs> it's your brand. My brand. <laughs> so I did three quarters of a cup of oil. Lovely. All right. <laughs> Salt and pepper and additional herbs based on your taste. And it does say thyme, basil, cilantro, et cetera. So you can basically put whatever freaking herbs you want in here. <laughs> According to this recipe. According a to lot this of recipe. people. A lot of people said, like, this is the only way to do it. This is the only way to do it, like Gretchen said. So, yeah, chimichurri is like a Mary Poppins bag. You just... Oh, look, I, I don't know if you noticed that on the recipe, there's actually a video. Uh-huh. So she, like, separated all her green onions out. Like, she kind of... How much, wait, how many green onions? I forget. I think I skipped over the green onion. Half a uh, cup. Half a cup. I think I jumped straight from garlic to red pepper, so... Don't forget your your green onions, people. Continue. Her chimichurri. Oh my God. That is not one to two tablespoons. I'm sorry, I'm commenting on her video. <laughs> she put like a quarter of a cup of oregano in there. I swear. It's gonna comment that she does say you can use lemon or lime. Let's get on with it. Okay, so now we know what we're using. I have been peeling stuff off the stems as we're chatting. I okay. still need to peel the rest of my garlic. Okay. Where are you I, at? I need to peel my garlic. I was about to separate my green onions. Okay, so we're starting with our green onions. Right, but mine aren't separating like hers were separating. So no, there's no real need to do that anyway. Can you describe for people who can't see the video what you mean by separating? So if you look at a, a green onion, it has a structure very similar to any other onion where it has basically layers. So it looked like the, that she had taken each individual layer of onion and separated it from the rest of the onion. Oh, like pe like a, like peeled it off almost? Like peeled right. the outer layer, then peeled the, the next layer to the middle? The, yeah. Oh, Which wow. Is, yeah, I, I don't feel like that's necessary. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I was like, oh, maybe I need to do that. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> you don't really, like, if you peel all those apart, then it actually kind of makes your job harder. Although you are doing fairly fine. Like, yeah, like, so I separated one. But then if you do it with it still together, yeah, see, there's no point. It's going to look the same either way. I am going to chop this a little bit more. All right. So that's our first venture off recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, after we swap half the ingredients. <laughs> yeah, maybe a quarter. I mean, this is no terribly uh, complicated recipe. How are you going to use yours? Ah, so I bought some plank steak this morning at the farm market. And I'll finish chopping that later. I'll throw those green onions in with my herbs and chop them all together. And also because I was watching that documentary about all about Argentine barbecue. Oh, right. I did not finish it because I was, it's in Spanish. And so since I don't speak really good Spanish, I actually had to watch the subtitles. So hard to get ready to record a podcast and watch something with subtitles at the same time is basically what I'm trying to say here. But what you watched was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really liked it. It was very, very informative. I didn't realize, <laughs> really hilarious. It's like so hilarious because the documentary was recorded in 2016 to they're at this restaurant and Anthony Bardain and got there with no reservations in 2012. And apparently one of the, the shticks they have at this restaurant, and I don't know if this is a common thing, but at least since this guy is telling the story, I feel like they must do this at some point. 
where he was having to prove how tender the steaks were by having his server cut them with a spoon. Wow. Like this humongous, thick ass steak he cut with a spoon. Anthony Bourdain had the audacity to suggest that they were playing some sort of trick by yeah. using the spoon and saying, you know, oh, the, sh- the, su- the spoon must be sharpened. No, mm-hmm. no. So then they did it with the handle of the fucking spoon. I was like, you do not question our Argentinians about their beef, I guess. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, they what did else? it. They, oh, I mean, yeah, no, I'll, I, I will tell you other things I've learned. <laughs> it was very detailed, but also they were talking about how, like, they grill pretty much everything out of a cow. And some, like, one of the more traditional things, and there's at least this one city that does a festival every year where they basically butcher and debone entire cows, or at least, like, I don't know if it's half a cow or an entire cow. Take the bones out, but they leave the skin and the hair on the outside. And so, like, Uh they rub the interior, the whole, like, interior of an entirely deboned cow with salt, olive oil, or oil, uh, pepper, and nutmeg. And then wrap it up with the skin around it and grill it, like, cook it in the skin. Wow. Everything. Cool. I'll have to look at the I don't want to eat it. But yeah, no, I know. I was like, and and if you're a little bit squeamish, you might want to skip over like the very first bits because they do go to a slaughterhouse. They don't show you anything graphic, but you do get to see the whole side of cow hanging. And that might be yeah, sort of hard. unpleasant for some people. And then the guy that works to stun, you know, basically incapacitate the cows before they're killed. They talk to him for a little bit. But then also there's like, the way they grill things there, it is in like these huge hunks. So they like take like entire sides of ribs from the cattle and grill the entire side of ribs. Like I, so I bought some ribs today when I was at the farmer's market <laughs> because I was very inspired by the by the documentary that I watched half of. It sounds like it with a spoon. With have a you spoon. ever seen Have you ever seen the movie Quigley Down Under? I don't think so. It has Tom Selleck and Alan Rickman in it. Alan Rickman is the bad guy and Tom Selleck is the hero and set in Australia and it's a Western and like, oh no, it's not that. I thought that was the line when Alan Rickman says, I'll cut your heart out with a spoon. But he says it in Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, not um, Quigley Down Under. So never mind. Uh, But Quigley Down Under is a weird movie too. (laughs) It sounds like it. Yeah. It's got some good lines in it, but I think I haven't seen it in a long time. And I think if I watched it now, cause there's a lot of, it's a lot about the Aboriginal tribe in Australia. Uh, yeah. And I'm not, I can't remember how <laughs> that's framed. So yeah, I'll have to watch it again and see <laughs> what's really going on there. See if, if with your current frame of reference, it might be a slightly different movie. Exactly. For the garlic, can I mince it or can I? Um, you can microplane it, yeah. Microplane it, okay. Yeah. I've been chopping mine. Uh, uh-huh. I'm sort of starting because if you microplane it, then you're not going to have very far to go. So that's actually really smart, Becca. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> saying it after I've sliced all four of mine up and now I'm forced to go. Uh, I just go looked up and nine. saw you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch any more of that uh, video of Kenji at Google? No, I didn't. So he was talking about how he was, he named two different chefs. And I know one of them is Anthony Bourdain because Anthony Bourdain has a thing against garlic presses. But he was like, I don't <laughs> have a problem with garlic presses. <laughs> like, thank you. I feel, I feel reassured in my opinions about garlic presses. There you go. I mean, yeah, Kenji says it. We're good. We're good. That's funny. I just ordered a garlic press, I've never had one. And have you heard of this company called Dream Farm? Mm -mm. It's like, I don't really know how to describe it. It's a lot of like two in one kind of kitchen tools. They have like spatulas that are also tongs or something. I don't know. But I got a gift card there and I did get a garlic press. And what's super cool about it is it's a garlic press and extractor. So like when you, re- you can put it in with the, cl- with the peel, so you don't have to peel it. 
Mm -hmm. squeeze it. And then when you release, it has this thing on the top that scrapes all of the pushed out stuff down to your Mm. cutting board. So you never have to like touch it. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I'll let you know how it is. What is it called? Dream? Dream farm? Yeah. Hang on. I must put this in the computer right now so I don't forget to look for it. Absolutely. Because now I need to see it. Yeah, you do. I mean, some it's mostly like silicone stuff and it did look pretty cool. Wow. I've at least seen, like, I need to know. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. You got the uh, the Garject or the Garject yeah. light? The Garject. Since I had a gift card, I was like, yeah, I'm going for the that one. <laughs> Why not? Oh, oh dear. They make the, oh no, I could have told you to get some. I have something of theirs. You do? Do you like it? I love it. What is it? It's a mini spatula spoon. It says, okay, mini sit up scraping spoon. And I bought it at Shackford's. Oh, okay, cool. Perfect. Um, I love it so much. And so I was like, oh, I might need to go get more of these. That's great. Now you know where I came from. There's tons of stuff. I was like, wait, I have that. <laughs> I have that exact thing. I have the blue, the light blue one. If you think it's um, handy, then that it's is really high, nice. high praise. Oh, oh, my. Well, they have some really interesting things on here. I was like, I don't know how to describe it. They have a spadle. A what? A spoon ladle or a spatula ladle? Oh, my God. It's a spoon. That turns into a ladle. Well, that's pretty handy. That is the coolest fucking thing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like a big version, a really big version of the little thing I already have. Perfect. That's so fucking cool. I'm so glad I said something. I wondered if you might enjoy this website. Oh, you know, it's food and cooking related. Of course, I am. Totally. Totally. Okay, my garlic is microplaned. I'm putting it in the bowl. So we can just put everything in the bowl? Does it matter? I think so. Okay. So Let me double check the recipe. Because I think it was just basically like put everything together and mix. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can try that. We can do that. I might send you a little oregano plant. I have to make sure I can. Okay. We had some for a little while, but it, we get so many bugs inside. Hmm. Yeah, bugs are always a problem with indoor grows. It's really annoying. (laughs) Yeah. Although I was told, and I wonder if you've heard this, that if you make a little like spritz, like an air spritz of um, essential oil of eucalyptus, that that can help. So I'm going to try it. All right. Well, I've tried lots of different things. Popping up my time. What am I doing? It's looking at the recipe. Combine all ingredients. Combine (laughs) all the ingredients together in a medium-sized bowl and mix well. Okay. It's literally one line of instruction. The second line (laughs) of instruction is chimichurri can be made ahead of time, but should be kept refrigerated and is best used within 24 to 48 hours. That is my kind of instruction. I can follow that. (laughs) Well, I've um, mixed some salt in with my garlic okay that's gonna help me get to a bit more of a pasty consistency and if you use i probably need a not the fluffy kosher salt i'm using probably need something a little rougher which my rock salt mad just experiment <laughs> okay i've got my garlic done i've got my green onion done i've got my thyme done i'm working up now so i'm gonna do my half parsley half cilantro Okay, I will be doing that in just a minute. Oh, these herbs are so pretty. Okay, what's the best way to start to like shape your pile? To shape your pile? Like, I mean, do you want it like a bread loaf or something? Or do you want it like a circle? Oh, hang on. I don't know if I know how to answer that question. See what I do. But I think I just usually go for a round pile. Okay, just kind of start in the middle or something. So yeah, I think it's a round pile usually is what I go for. Okay. My my herbs, I did put them in the fridge wrapped up in a towel for about an hour earlier and then got them out. And so they've had lots of time to sit and sort of dry out a bit. Okay. They're nice and fluffy. There are my green onions on there too. So I've got cilantro, green onion, parsley, and my oregano in here. 
So why can't we use a food processor? Just because it'll chop it too fine and incorporate it together too much. Got it. I mean, I'm half just, kidding. I'm sorry. Why? Wait, we're just going to chop the shit out of this, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. We've been using the food processor a lot lately. Yeah. I Well, that's why I was just like, I think we can do this by hand. It's not. Mm-hmm. Of course, my hands are saying otherwise. Yeah, how you doing? They are not happy with me right now. We're almost done with the chopping, right? The pepper's next. Yeah, I don't know why they're so angry today. Why are you guys angry today? Yeah. I tried to put stuff to make you numb on you and in you. I've had lots of pot today. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we've said in a while that you have rheumatoid arthritis. I feel like we talk about it all the time, so I don't know. I don't think we ever name it. That's true. I think I don't ever say that in particular. I might be done chopping mine. Okay. Because I still got like some definition to the leaves, but they're definitely chopped chopped up pretty well. Sounds good to me. It's a little slimy, but that's probably just from my green onion. (laughs) Oh, right. (laughs) So that is one disadvantage of doing the green onion in there is you won't have, your herbs will not be as fluffy and they'll stick to your hands a lot more. Got it. So this is the sound of chopping soundtrack episode. It's the sound of chopping. <laughs> okay, Ooh, I think I'm that, done chopping mine too. Oh, that is real spicy. Ah. Oh. All right, I may not put the whole pepper in. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it just says small. And I, I get that, but I'm also like, I wish I could have a more of a size description. Yeah, I'm going to start with this amount of red pepper. And if it needs more spice later, I will add that later. <laughs> Measure out a little spoon of my lemon juice. Oops, maybe a little, uh, little critter had gotten into my vinegar here. Ooh, sneaky little guys. Nah, it's just some herb. Not sure herb. herb, but it's <laughs> an herb. So I think I'm going to make salmon tacos. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to save half to marinate and then half to top all right yeah all right so i now added my i've added everything together i'm done you did it <laughs> i made three three pots <laughs> i'm just doing my jalapeno i'm only doing like a quarter of this jalapeno because it's pretty big and i like jalapeno and i don't want it to be taken over this dish yeah you don't need dominating jalapeno no, I need a sub jalapeno. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like a dom and a sub. Oh. <laughs> I like that comparison, though. It's really apt. <laughs> you want it there. You don't want it running the show. Exactly. Okay, one like tablespoon it. fresh lemon juice. I accidentally put three tablespoons of red wine vinegar into my... Oops. So I have a little extra vinegar, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because I like my stuff a little sour. Nice. I'm using red wine vinegar that Gretchen made and sent to me. Well, so am I. Uh, (laughs) Using my own homemade red wine vinegar. There we go. That's the way to to say it. It smells so good. Mm -hmm. All right. Half a cup of oil. I'm also going to be having french fries. I'm doing french fries with my steak today. Mm, yum. How do you make your French fries and how do you cut them? Like, do you ha- yeah, tell me how you're going to do this. So I'm going to use my mandolin. Okay. My fries. And then I use a recipe from Smitten Kitchen, I think, because it really is, it's the best, easiest French fry recipe. And so they, she just uses Yukon Gold. You start with the oil and the fries and the potatoes cold in the oil. And then you just bring it up to temperature and let it cook for, I mean, it's for a while. Hmm. And they are so easy and so good. Well, that sounds delicious. Yeah. So we're doing steak and fries. Nice. So yeah, you just put them into, oh, actually she was just doing it. Well, she was like one of those deeper, like cast iron skillet type things, but more rounded. Mm -hmm. So I used my Dutch oven. Mm, That sounds good. Yeah. So Uh, I just finished making mine. I mixed all my ingredients together. Ta-da! Ta-da! Super easy and convenient and tasty sauce. Totally. 
a good reason to grow lots of uh, parsley. Yeah, or cilantro. Should we share some of the fun facts about these herbs and why like this is also, this is delicious. It works in so many places and it's really good for you. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So so this isn't like a 20 minute episode, you mean? (laughs) (laughs) Kind (laughs) of. I I didn't notice that you wrote, what's the difference between a green onion and a scallion? Nothing. Mm -hmm. They're the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. They're the same thing. So anywhere you see green onion, they're also talking about a scallion. Okay. But yeah, this is like super healthy because you've got parsley, which is like one of the healthiest things on the planet. Some if you look at some of the benefits to it, I think it's got, since it's rich in antioxidants, I'm pretty sure it's got vitamin A and C in it. Then it's got a lot of calcium as well. So it's really good for bone health. It contains cancer fighting substances. I'm always like, what does that mean? No, yeah. I'm like, not sure what that means or how they can determine very big. it so vaguely. Yeah. And oh, parsley extract has antibacterial properties. So that's pretty cool. It has some nutrients that can help protect your eyes. For those of oh. us like me who have like light colored eyes, this oh, really? like genetic deficiency, sometimes the sun's so bright. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't realize was, uh, that eye color was related to that, but that would make sense as to be why people like from the northern parts of Europe have lighter colored eyes and uh-huh. people that tend to live around the equator region tend to have brown eyes. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Totally. So parsley, anyway. ugh, which some people like, I get it. It's good for you. I don't like it, but that's okay. <laughs> but cilantro, I do like. <laughs> and cilantro also. can help rid the body of heavy metals. Pretty cool. And can help lower anxiety and improve sleep, which is helpful these days, as I know I'm not sleeping great. I imagine a lot of people are not sleeping great. So eat some more cilantro. Well, and oh, didn't even see this one before. Maybe I did and I just forgot. It says it lowers blood sugar levels. So that's kind of interesting. Super cool. And protects against food poisoning, which I was like, what? No, I don't know why. Right. Also can help with UTIs, prevention of UTIs, which is important. And now on to lemons. I didn't realize that. Did I know that about helping control weight? With lemons? Yeah. I know a lot of people do like hot water with lemon in the morning or in the evening to curb appetite. I don't know if it, I'm not sure how it works, but I always thought that that helps with like hydration and sometimes I think when most of the time when you think you're hungry you're just really thirsty Thirsty. yeah so it could be both those things it could be something totally different yeah (laughs) we don't know we're just telling you things we've read we've read we've read some shit yeah (laughs) we are oh no I just touched my eye and I still have like pepper on my hands oh no I think it'll be okay I did wash okay. my hands, so hopefully it's not too much. Lemon can also help prevent kidney stones, can help prevent or help with anemia, and can improve digestive health. Yeah. Oh, I was going to, I thought you said digestive health for lemon. I was like, I always like to drink a little bit of olive oil when I feel like my mm. digestive system isn't working very quickly. So that makes sense too. Olive oil has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. It helps with heart disease. It's got that good fat. Good fat. Strong anti-inflammatory properties may prevent strokes. And what about green onion? I'm sorry, I can't get over the fact that green onions apparently have twice the recommended amount for adults of vitamin K. Uh, I never think about vitamin K. Well, it's sort of a weird (laughs) vitamin that comes from really unusual sources, like grass-fed butter, grass, you know, butter from grass-fed cows. (laughs) Grass-fed butter, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, and they're str- they have a lot of vitamin C. So, so this there you go. this chimichurri sauce has a ton of vitamin C between mm-hmm. the parsley, the green onion, and the lemon. Lemon, yeah, it's great for the winter time. Yeah, sorry, I'm laughing because I actually touched both of my eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well now that we've both finished all two steps of our dish, or I guess just one step, one and step. read the cool facts. You can probably go wash your eyes out now. <laughs> I sure I probably should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we've discussed what we're doing with our our stuff. Yeah. So, you know, this is just, yeah, something real easy. There are lots of different ways to make it. Go with whatever you like. You know, just pick a recipe, start with that one. You don't let particularly care for that one, look at try a different one. There are so many different recipes. Yeah. We'll put just 
probably 10 on our website alone. So, yeah. so make sure you check out highgluttony.com. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, because we'll be sharing these tips that Gretchen was talking about and all the fun facts about where we got our recipes and other things that we made, other changes that we made within our own recipes. And remind you not to touch your eyes after you've chopped chili peppers (laughs) or make sure you wear gloves because that's always a good idea. (laughs) Thanks for joining us for another High Gluttony. I'm winking at it up, everybody. Yeah, I'm just wildly thinking. closing her eyes and opening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go wash your eyes out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>